Hi, everybody. This will be your weekly update for LAR 120 Sustainable Development. Uh, module 6 is now graded, and you should have uh, a link to a Google Doc in your email, and you can check out your grade and any comments I've made. Uh, for the most part, people did a great job on this module. Did have a couple of issues with data. People are doing a better job of finding quantitative data. Now we all have to start, or some of us need to start practicing, uh, how to take that quantitative data and use it effectively. Uh, for instance, there was a great uh, piece of data on obesity rates in uh, globally in different nations, and people tried to tie that to recommendations that were made in 1942 about transportation. And I actually think that's a pretty valid tie, and it's a great connection, but if you only offer up the most recent data on obesity and don't show what it was before 1942, it's difficult for people to see that connection, especially if you're out there in the public working in this uh, industry of sustainable development. Um, there's going to be people really paying close attention to the data you present and how you present it. So let's start to try to take that quantitative data and really connect the dots for the reader. In, in, the, you know, in that case, it's me. Usually I'm reading, I'm grading your paper. But some of you in two years will be working at this professionally and uh, it won't be an instructor grading your paper anymore, but you'll be dealing with an environmental engineer or a town manager or a homeowner, um, and they'll, they'll be reading it um, for effective um, support of your argument using data uh, in, in a way that won't result in a lower grade, but maybe get, you know, getting a job and, and, and getting some business or not getting that job. So it's important. Um, I also wanted to mention the greenways in Haywood County. I hope all of you checked out that free GIS map. There's also a very similar but more powerful GIS server for Buncombe County. If you live there with lots of information and layers, you can take a look at. The big problem with the greenways in Haywood County is right now they are not connected. So there's a little loop in Canton. There's a little loop around Lake Junaluska. There's some stuff in downtown Waynesville, but it's not meaning meaningly connected in a way that you could commute based on those. Now there's groups, there's the uh, Haywood County Greenways Advisory Council that's working on that, there's the Haywood County, I think it's called Pedestrian Group that's also working on connecting those greenways, but it's something that would really help and I think most of you found data that shows it would help with the triple bottom line as well. So important issues you know we have a lot of infrastructure in this in the United States where greenways weren't part of the original plan but they can be uh, there's also always a fear about public safety when you have people in your backyard or on your property I will tell you that most of the data though says that in fact you're safer when a greenway comes through your property and that may seem counterintuitive I've got all these strangers walking in my backyard but in the age of cell phones when someone's walking in your backyard, suddenly you've got people who are interested in exercising and walking for the most part, interested in being out in their community with a cell phone, and they look at the back of Buddy's house and say, hey, uh, those don't look like, you know, that doesn't look like Buddy's neighbors or friends there. Um, why would they be hauling all of his TVs and computers out of a back window and, and putting them in, you know, putting that electronics into a van? And they'll do something like call 911. So you can look at it as strangers crossing your property, or you can look at it as people in your community providing another set of eyes on your property. And it can not only be for crime, it can be for health. you got elderly people living in the house by themselves and walkers are used to seeing them or bike riders every day out on their porch at a certain time and suddenly they're not there. You know, they can call the authorities and have someone take a look at them. Um, if there's a creek by the Greenway and there's bank destabilization, again, another set of eyes watching that. Um, so usually it does make things safer. Now it only takes one crime event to undo the whole thing and I saw that happen when I was in Vermont at a beautiful Greenway um, and the public recovered from it but it, it did cause a setback when there was a, a, a crime that occurred on a recreational path. So a lot of issues there um, but an important thing to think about doing, uh, important thing to think about including in sustainable development and design. Also, I, I want to reiterate the late policy. 
I hate to be a stickler on this, but you've seen I do not accept late work. Now that said, if you've had a computer failure or somebody's been really sick, um, I'm always willing to work with people. Uh, I will tell you, if someone comes to me and says, well, I had you know, exams in my other classes this week, I couldn't get to yours. Well, even if you believe that, uh, don't tell me because it makes me think that my class is the least important and we all know sustainable development is the most important. Um, so don't tell me that. <laughs> but anyway, um, I had a few late assignments this week and I have graded them as if they weren't late, but I have noted in my books that they are because, you know, in the big scheme of things, it's not fair for one person to take a few extra days because they had a busy week and we all have busy schedules um, where another person scrambled to turn it in by midnight and may not have, have done as much work on it as they would have liked. So if you were one of those people who turned in your assignment late this week, be forewarned that at the end of the semester, I will be docking you for that. And I'm going to make this plea one more time. I do not accept late work. If you have an emergency, let me know and we will work something out. Um, but do not submit things late. And the other thing is please submit all your assignments in one document whether that's a Word document, I mean, other than the blog post, whether it's a Word document or a Google Doc, however you want to do it, put it all together. It makes all of our lives a lot easier, including mine when I grade. Um, uh, we've got on most of the responses about a potential movie night. I'm excited about that. I'm just waiting on a few more people, and then I'll get back in touch with you with that date, and maybe we'll get some general movie topics people might be interested in. Um... I think that's about, oh, in education, why is education so important with green streets and skinny streets? I did want to talk about that. Uh, green streets and skinny streets are fantastic ways for traffic calming, to increase the walkability and bicycle rideability in neighborhoods, but most people, when they hear the recommendations, just kind of freak out about it and don't want their roads changed and don't want to think, in fact, they think it's going to make things more unsafe. And most of the data shows that's not true. You may also have to educate not only the general public, but uh, the important groups that work out there, volunteer firefighters, uh, the police department. Any sort of emergency services is going to need to be educated about how they can function in a, in a narrower street or green street environment because that becomes important to them as well. So education is always a critical piece. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough for this week, and I will be in touch with you soon. I may put a little Greenway poll or something on the blog with this video just to see where people are at personally. And again, I allow in this class you to develop a lot of your own personal opinions, um, but just make sure you always back them up with data. Um, and you're not always going to agree with me, and I'm not always going to agree with you, but data, quantitative data, um, can be interpreted, interpreted really only... Uh, one way as far as the numbers go and then it's up to you for you to use that to support your argument in a way that is meaningful. Alright, I hope everyone has a great week and if I don't talk to you again, have a wonderful spring break.